Today we're going to demo the Citrix Analytics integration with Splunk. This integration is going to allow you to export and correlate security data from your Citrix environment and allow deeper insights into your organization's security posture. Now in the CAS console, we're going to select Settings and then Data Sources. Scroll down to the Splunk Data Export section and click Get Started. The username is going to be pre-populated. This is where we're going to create a secure password and then click on Configure. Now when the configuration is complete, the username, host name, topic name, and group name will be visible. This information will be used by Splunk to receive the data from the analytics service. Now in our Splunk instance, we're going to install the Citrix add-on app from the Splunk market. As you can see, the add-on has a description and an overview which will give you more insights into the source code and some how-to documents and you could also subscribe to get updates. The message on the top left is going to verify that the Citrix Analytics add-on for Splunk was installed successfully and we're going to configure the data inputs for the Citrix Analytics add-on. In the Analytics add-on input session we're going to click New And now we're going to use the information that was created within the CAS UI. Here we're going to define a name for the analytics input. We're going to input the password that we created earlier. And then we're going to use the host name, topic name, and group name. Click Next, and we're finished configuring the Citrix Analytics add-on for Splunk. Now we should start seeing events flowing in from the CAS service into our Splunk instance. This is a good checkpoint for us to make sure all of our configuration was successful. Once we've installed and configured, we now can use the pre-built-in dashboards to see how our events are flowing in, and the security posture of our users. The first dashboard is a risk overview. This dashboard gives an overview of how many high risk, medium risk, and low risk users have been detected within the system. The risk can be displayed as a trend over time, and you can also search within a given time frame. We also can investigate the details of each user so that we can see how many indicators were triggered for a particular user. You can click on these users and drill down into more details. This brings us to the Entity Details dashboard, which is one of the other dashboards that are provided. Again, we see trending, distribution of indicators, and also the location of the user. For example, this could be a compromised user depending on where the logon was triggered. And also further down, we get more details on IP and the devices that are being used. Now back on the overview page, we can see the risk indicator overview dashboard. This dashboard is focused on an overview for the entire customer tenant. Here we can see risk, all the risk indicators that were triggered and looking at the different filter, filter possibilities. We can filter by time, you can filter by entities, or custom indicators. Here we can change the grouping. Currently we see the grouping is based on a data source, but we could also reference by indicator category. Based on the category, you see how many compromised endpoints there are, how often they were triggered, and how many individual entities were related to this trigger. As you can see, there are 135 indicators triggered as insider threats, and this is coming from 15 unique entities. You can also drill down further into the individual risk indicator. The previous view was more of an overview, and this one is now focused on the specific indicators. 
we have the same filter functionalities like time range, entity type, and risk indicator. The next, this next dashboard is a user profile events dashboard. This is generated every 12 hours. And what we see here are our top most used applications, devices, and locations from all users. We're able to drill down and see the specific distribution and also how that looks over time. Further down, we could see uh, information on our files, ones that are being shared, deleted, and how often these actions are occurring and the bandwidth that is being used. The last dashboard is the debugging dashboard. We could use this to make sure that events are flowing into the system. If we're not seeing a particular indicator, uh, we could just use this to double check that the system is configured correctly.